I want to do one more area problem that we really focused a lot on last year, and then we're going to move on to consecutive integer uh, quadratic problems. So over here, you remember, if I wanted to find the area of the shaded region, last year we took the area of the large minus the area of the small. And I made you guys put the area of the small in parentheses so that that could tell us that we've got to use the distributive property. Well, it's going to be the same thing now. So if I want to find the area of the shaded region, and it's telling me that the area of the shaded region is 59 square units. So in order to find that, I take the area of the large, which is 2x minus 1 times x plus 6, and I'm going to subtract the area of the small, x times x plus 3. And all that is going to be equal to 59 square units. So remember, I have a binomial times a binomial, so I'm going to FOIL it. I'm going to double distribute however you want to do it, 12x minus x minus 6. So here I get 2x squared plus 11x minus 6. Over here, I get x squared plus 3x. But remember, I'm subtracting it, so I distribute that negative, and I get negative x squared minus 3x all set equal to 59. So let's pause real quick and see if you understood how I got that. I still multiplied the area of the small rectangle. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Notice it's still in parentheses because I'm subtracting. So make sure you distribute that negative. Now I'm here and I combine my like terms. x squared, get 11x and negative 3x, which is plus 8x. And then I have negative 6, and I set all of that equal to 59. I'm going to factor this guy out, so I'm going to um, subtract 59 on both sides. x squared plus 8x minus 60, uh, 65 equals 0. I'm going to move this up here so you can see me work. So here I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative um, 65, but add together to give me a positive 8. So those two numbers are going to be 13 and negative 5. So here I have x plus 13, x minus 5, and now I'm going to set my factors equal to 0 and solve, and I get x equals negative 13 and x equals positive 5. Now, the extraneous information, it does not make sense for x to equal negative 13, so I'm going to look and I'm going to call x is equal to 5. So let's see if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to plug in 5 here and 8, that's 40, and if I plug in 5 here, that gives me 11 and 9, so 11 times 9 it, for the area of the large is 99, and then I subtract the small, which is 40, and that gives me 59. I check my answer, I know I'm good. So it's asking the dimensions, so I'm going to say, you're going to write a full sentence. Length is 11 inches, and width is 9 inches. Okay, so remember these problems, area of the large minus area of the small. Now, let's move on to consecutive integers. So I'm going to move my screen up, I think, and I'm going to expand it. Because remember last year when we did these, I wanted to see those three separate boxes to keep all my information correct straight. So I have the product of two positive consecutive integers is 56. I don't know my first number, so I'm going to let x be my first number, and I'm going to let x plus 1 be my second number. They're consecutive integers, so x and x plus 1, and I know the product is 56, so that means multiply. So x times x plus 1 is equal to 56, and so now I multiply x squared plus x equals 56, and now I just factor. So I set everything equal to 0. So I subtract 56 on both sides, and two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 56 and add together to give me 1 are going to be x plus 8 and x minus 7. And then I set my factors equal to 0, 
and I solve. x equals negative 8, x equals 7. And this says positive integers. So while negative 8 may be an answer, it's saying positive integers. So I'm going to cross out negative 8 and see, does 7 times 8 equal 56? It does, and it checks out. So in full sentence, you would say two consecutive integers are 7 and 8. So I do want to see that written out in full sentence. Let's do another one. Um, let's do the one below it. Consecutive. All right, so here's... All right, so this is a great one. So it's saying that... Uh, Find two positive consecutive odd integers. So I know I'm going to let x be my first integer, and I'm going to let x plus 2 be my second integer, because remember, we're skipping. So last year, if the first one, for instance, if x was 1, to get to that next integer, you would say 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So we talked a lot about that last year. And now let's read it. It says, I've already identified. Once I've identified those, I cannot change them. That's going to stay there. So now I'm just going to read the sentence and put it in. It says, such that the square of the first one, x squared, added to 3 times the second, which is 3 times the second, is 24. That is a literal translation. And then I'm going to distribute that 3. And now I have a quadratic that I'm going to set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 24 on both sides. I get x squared plus 3x minus uh, 4 and 6, 18 equals 0. And now I am going to factor. So the two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 18 and combine together to give me 3 are going to be 6 and 3, positive 6 and a negative 3. So x plus 6 and x minus 3. Now I'm setting those factors equal to 0. So x equals negative 6 and x equals positive 3. Now it says two positive consecutive integers. So I'm going to cross out that negative 6. And then I'm going to look. Uh, does 3 squared, which is 9, plus 3 times the second integer, which is 5, does that equal 24? 9 plus 15 equals 24. 24 equals 24. It checks out. So the number that I am looking for is 3 and 5. So 3 and 5 are going to be those the answer. Okay, if you're struggling, come and see me.